Come up on tonight's Talk Gnosis, not another Gnostic movie. Welcome to Talk Gnosis for December 4th, 2013. I'm Bishop Kenneth Canterbury, and joining me as usual is my lovely co-host, Bishop Laney Peterson. How are you this evening, Laney? I am wonderful, Bishop Ken. How are you tonight? I'm doing really well. Right. Well, you know, we are going to be continuing uh, kind of um, the whole entire series of Gnosis and Cinema, which always Absolutely. seems to be kind of a fan favorite. And tonight we're going to be discussing The Truman Show. And I don't know about you, that's always been one of my favorite movies, and even more so once I started kind of putting the pieces together and what was kind of materializing in front of my eyes. Absolutely. This was a movie that I saw, well, it was quite some time ago, what was it, 98 that it came out? Yes, yeah, Something along while. those lines. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, as an adopted person, someone who was adopted at birth, and I don't want to give too much away at this point, but... Um, it was a very profound experience because of uh, Truman's situation, and it wasn't until recently that I began to see the very real, the, the religious, the spiritual, the, the Gnostic implications of this film. Uh -huh. And uh, we, I, we do want to warn everybody: there are going to be spoilers in this show. So, you, if you spoiler have spoiler <laughs> alert. If you have not yet seen the movie and you, you don't want to know about the ending um, or, or anything else about the film, you know, turn this off now and, and you know, go watch the movie and then you can come on back and listen to the discussion. Yep, hit the pause. Don't talk, shut us off. Just hit pause, watch Absolutely. the movie and come back. Well, you know, again, spoiler alert. You know, I found some of the things just kind of interesting off the bat. I mean, even the name itself, Truman, True Man. Yeah, you know, um, you know that in and of itself gives a little bit of a clue. I mean, you know, the name True True Man or Truman, you know, can be taken so many different ways from kind of that primordial man. Even if we kind of look into the areas of kind of Norse mythology and Norse religions, you know, being true, you know, being that true man. Um, you know, there's a whole entire play on words that's going on, even with the title. That I think immediately for for those who are looking for kind of esoteric connections, you're saying, hmm, there's something unique about this. And uh, for me, I mean, uh, it kind of starts right from the very beginning, kind of its uniqueness. Absolutely. And, and just to give kind of a brief synopsis for those uh, who aren't that familiar with the movie and have decided they don't mind spoilers, um, the idea behind The Truman Show is that a, a baby born to an unwed mother uh, is adopted by a corporation. And they take this baby into a dome uh, in, in Los Angeles, which has been, which has a, essentially an artificial city in it. And it's a reality show. There's cameras everywhere, and everybody just gets to watch this baby Truman as, as he grows up. Um, so the and Truman does not realize that he is being filmed, and that everybody in his life, including his own parents and eventually his wife, are all actors. Right. So th this is a, it's it's a, it's a reality sh it's a movie about a reality show in which the central character uh, only knows this as his only reality. Um, and you know, going back to what you said, um, Bishop Ken, about the true man, um, and I, I'm I keep on going back to the work of of Mr. Gurdjieff, but in in uh, in Fourth Way, we talk about somebody being a man, not in quotation marks. Mm. The idea of somebody who has gotten past their mechanical self and who has come into their own and become an individual in their own right be, is, as a man, not in quotation marks. So there's a certainly uh, so many connections here between uh, the, the, being, be, him becoming throughout this uh, movie a true man. And he struggles a great deal to get to that point. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, you know how I guess you know for a lot of us who, especially, are looking at it kind of in the Gnostic mythos, is that you've got this idea of Truman being brought into this material world by the creator, in this case, the producer of the show, mm -hmm. and he has no sense at all that the world that he is in is all an illusion. 
everything to him seems as normal as our normal everyday life. His friends, his associates, his schools, what he feels in his heart, the love he feels for people. You know, and he doesn't know that this little kind of beach town that he lives in, that there's anything really beyond that. This is his world. This is his universe. And for Truman, at the beginning stages of the movie, he's perfectly happy being Truman. You know, mm -hmm. there is nothing in his world that gives him any clues in the beginning that there is anything that that may be different, that there's anything that he's missing in life. But gradually that changes. It, it does. And the interesting thing is, you know, the producer, the creator, um, he's not actually a creator. There's, it's kind of a first lie there. He didn't mm -hmm. create Truman. He is not right. Truman's biological father. Right. And he, ha he has not, he certainly didn't build the dome. He, right. he didn't create the actors. He didn't right. create the sets. Right. The only thing that he's created is the program. True. Or the system. Yes. And that giving a false consciousness to Truman. Right. Everything around Truman, Truman is a, is a flesh and blood person. Right. And the actors are flesh and blood, and there's material around it, but he has a completely diff warped understanding. And moreover, I think we can also argue that the actors and the crew um, and in, have all themselves imbibed on this false consciousness because they're contributing to it, and they clearly are not, well, are not having that much of a moral quandary. So he's created a system and a program, but he has not actually created anything material. Uh, material he's just created this way of thinking you're absolutely correct and again you know how can we take parallels with that with kind of the idea of the demiurge this isn't you know the material universe you know this hylic nature that we know you know this wasn't from his power this was something that was stolen and the producer steals this child mm -hmm. i mean we keep did he literally steal? No, it was a deal with the corporation where they adopted this child. But there's nothing that is truly of his own creation, as you pointed out. Um, he's producing this show, and gradually, what happens to, to, to Truman? You know, as he matures, as he starts becoming a man, he starts noticing some inconsistencies, you know. It wasn't like this huge epiphany where you woke up one morning like, oh my God, this is fake. He starts noticing a little bit here and a little bit there and starts putting and weaving kind of these pieces of the puzzle together where yeah. he starts kind of seeing that um, this illusion that I'm living in is an illusion. I need to find out the truth. So then all it starts becoming a quest. It, it does become a quest, and of course, the creator and his minions uh, do everything that they possibly can to buffer uh, Truman from his the glimpses that there's something not right, that there's something that's, that's saying to Truman, something's not right here, and in many times they will use uh, things that will just calm Truman down, but they will also do things that are extremely traumatic, like they didn't want Truman getting anywhere, trying to travel across water, so uh, they kill Truman's father, the actor playing Truman's father, in a boating accident, which is a horrific, right. just a horrific violation of this child's psyche. Sure. And, but they're perfectly, you know, the, the creator's perfectly willing to do that if, the, if that is what's necessary to keep the program going. Mm hmm And, but then later, what happens with the father? Well, you know, the, there was some love there. <laughs> right. And uh, so you start having some inklings coming in, and so you have Truman being awake and alert, looking around, sees mm -hmm. his father, and mm -hmm. his father has snuck onto the set, and of course they, they you know, they, they bring his father back, saying his father had had am amnesia. But, right. you know, this man, as, even though he may have been twisted ethically to begin with by participating in this show, mm -hmm. something occurred in him that he actually, I think, had love. And, mm -hmm. of course, we saw this with the actress uh, that, you know, that Truman actually falls in love with. And she's mm -hmm. the one who's railing on the outside. So there was, there, was something out, there was something within the larger system, but outside the um, 
interior system which had Truman the most trapped, agitating on, on Truman's behalf, which I think was, is, is very interesting, um, particularly when she's, she's praying uh, at, at the very end it, it was for Truman's um, decision to leave. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, it, it to me that the, the notion of that there is some maybe some outside help available, I think, is important for those of us uh, who are seeking further knowledge of the divine and trying to escape a false consciousness. That there might be love outside us that can mm-hmm. help us on that quest. And, and I thought it was kind of interesting that on that point. Uh, you know, this woman who's praying for him and who's kind of cheering him on to find the truth. This kind of one who's helping, like in his redemption, is is female, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think again that kind of plays into the kind of the idea of both the divine feminine, the ideas of Sophia. I think there's many things that kind of come into play, even you know, kind of with that, um, you know, kind of interaction. It's interesting though that these buffers, you know, and we mentioned a little bit, kind of like the buffers, like the sea, the ocean. And even that in itself, you know, the idea of this great sea, this ocean that divides him Mm -hmm. from the truth. You know, you think of almost like in Kabbalistic terms, you know, uh, the idea of the great sea or or ocean can be found in some ways of either that great abyss, you know, Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes even, you know, and kind of that concept of, uh, of Bina, of, of understanding. And, for Truman, you know, he must cross the sea mm-hmm. before he gets to that stage, before he's finally able to walk out and see the truth for himself. He may have thought at this point. At this point, it's all kind of what I call, you know, head gnosis. Yeah. It's not experience gnosis. It's ideas that's in his head. I think this is true. I'm getting these ideas that are putting together. But it's not until he takes that step out that he actually experiences that gnosis. And he's got to cross this great sea to be able to do that. But but all of these things are kind of a buildup where it is from all of these experiences together that makes him take that journey, makes him cross the sea makes him finally believe enough in himself that that I believe in myself that this is what is true and I have to do what is true for my nature and does that. And at the end, nobody can really deny him that. And all of the audience who's watching, millions of viewers throughout the world, you know, I mean, highest ratings on their TV show. Everybody in the world wanted him to do that. But everybody was praying for, for Truman to, to make that great cross, open up the door, and kind of walk into, uh, into the truth for him. And I think that says something, too. It's this kind of principle of even when we are aware that there may be millions out there who are kind of... Um, praying for our salvation, for lack of a better word, that we don't know what other forces and powers are out there assisting us. That is, that, that is, that is very true. And, and as I said, there, there, was, there were things from outside, and I think that that's an important aspect of this show. I do think it interesting that the creator's finer, you know, final buffer was mm-hmm. revealing himself to Truman, saying, okay, you know, this is what's going on, but hey, you're safe here, but here, we're, we're meeting each other here. And I think that it, that it so often people might, in fact, have a a very real at the very when you're struggling on this quest for gnosis or you're struggling on this quest to know the divine, it can be so easy to get turned around at the last moment by something that seems real, and that's mm-hmm. why you have to test the spirits. Right. Um, that this man was not promising Truman liberation; he was promising Truman comfort. Right. And that's different from liberation. Now, the one thing that I do think is important, though, is that while I was very happy when Truman left, Mm -hmm. Truman was leaving this very insulated and protected world for a world that allowed all this to happen. Right. And that sat around watching this happen. So he there there's a there's a step to liberation. But now he's going to be out in another kind of system where he may appear to have more freedom, but the oppression is still there. It's obviously a very dystopian society. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so now he's got a whole other struggle. And I think that that, for, for those of us who are on this path, something that we have to understand, that we're not going to have that final rest. We think we get to one point, we're out of it, and uh, you know we, we, we can sit back and relax. It's not the way it works. Now he's got an even bigger struggle. Right. And that's, you know, one of the things that I've always kind of pointed out to to students uh, kind of in the past, you know, and in the future, present, is that it's a continuous journey. You know, it's not that we get to this kind of point of enlightenment. It's, ah, uh, you know, the angels are singing and the bright lights are surrounding us. It is this constant journey of self-discovery, this constant journey of learning new things, of experiencing new things, of, of letting that divine you know, kind of work with, within us. But not necessarily you're walking through this door and everything's going to change. You know, Sometimes when you open that door and you walk through it, your struggles have just started to begin. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's again, one of these shows we could be going on for a lot longer, but we, we need to be getting wrapped up here. Well, definitely um, one of my favorite subjects, yeah. I think. Yeah, and I can see why the, the viewers like this this uh, idea of um, Gnostic themes in cinema, because, uh, you know, in current cinema, there has been a lot of these themes that um, really kind of, I think, speak to many different archetypes with people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, we do have a little bit of news. Um, if you are in the Chicago area, uh, the parish of St. John the Revelator, is, um, which is part of the Apostolic Jonite Church, is having its holiday nosh and study group on December 14th. Um, if this is of any interest to you, the, your first beverage will be free if you decide to, to join the group. And I, I'll be making an appearance. Uh, Deacon John DeGilio will be, uh, is hosting, and he has been a guest on this show in the past. Um, and if you're interested, you can can visit our meetup group on, at meetup.com and just look for Parish of St. John the Revelator and uh, you, you, can, you can find us on there. Um, so I want to thank you. That sounds you. like a lot uh, of fun. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's always a great time. Always oh, a great like time. It. Well, you know, I just want to mention to all of our uh, fans and watchers, you know, make sure, you know, you, uh, you keep watching us on YouTube. Make sure to leave comments in the comment section. You know, we always appreciate your feedback on Facebook. Give us a give us a like. Drop us a note at talknosis at gnosticnyc.com. Um, we do appreciate all of our viewers out there. And we've got another really exciting show coming up next week for the yeah. 11th. You want to tell us a little bit about that, Lenny? Yes. Um, Catherine Diedrich of what Quadrivium Supplies will be joining us. Catherine specializes in the creation of ritual oils, and she'll be talking about the use of scent and rituals and, and working with candles and, and oils together. So I think it's going to be a great show, very practical for anybody um, who uses scent or candles in their rituals. So that's really exciting. And awesome. we've also got another special guest on December 18th, uh, Bishop Mar Martin Jacobs, uh, who is incredibly knowledgeable on all esoteric topics, uh, mm -hmm. will be discussing Christian theosophy and Martinism with us. Yeah, and that should be a good show. It, you know, Martin, I've known for a long time. In fact, um, you know, big thumbs up. Him and uh, William were my uh, first primary consecrators many years Absolutely. ago. So, uh, you know, big thanks to Martin for that. And Martin and I used to work together in a Martinist Lodge. Uh, in fact, to him and I, uh, my memory serves me, we even received our SIs uh, together. So uh, it should be a really good discussion, especially for our viewers who aren't familiar with Martinism. Absolutely. Okay, then. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us again. And this has been a production of the Gnostic NYC Network. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends. Click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the views of Gnostic NYC or any other organizations. Uh, no animals were harmed during the production of this show. And for more Talk Gnosis, tune in every Wednesday for new episodes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, everyone. See you next week. Good night.